Thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, sport has an increasing monopoly of live attention. So what you're looking at here are the top 100 most viewed US uh, broadcast events in 2011. Blue represents live sports event coverage and grey is non-sport. 49 of the top 100 US broadcast events that year uh, related to live sport. So already a pretty healthy market share. Fast forward to last year, that number had gone up to 92. 92% 92 of the most watched live broadcast experiences were sport. Sport has a growing and tightening monopoly over live attention, live consumption. I think this matters for lots of reasons. There are commercial implications, obviously. This is pretty good news for sponsors and advertisers and broadcasters that go around sport and ultimately for the rights owners who provide the content. But I think there are, there are other less commercial implications of this, or, or at least less overtly commercial implications that are just as important. Think about what it means to experience something live. By definition, to consume something live is to share an experience with another human being in space or in time. So as sport has this increasingly monopolistic relationship with live consumption, what sport's basically doing is developing a controlling share in our ability to form shared, resonant, cherished experiences and memories with other people. Who among us doesn't have a cherished memory of watching a tense penalty shootout in our living room with our family? Of watching a tense set point in the pub with our friends? These moments, these memories define us. They help us figure out who we are and who our friends are. They shape us over time. This, to my mind at least, is the most significant thing that sets sport apart from other forms of leisure as we will see extra demand come into the market in the next 10 years.